contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Ah, wrong button. Wrong button. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Happy Saturday. Saturday? Saturday. Yeah, it's Saturday. How's everyone doing today? It is Saturday night. I feel all right. What are we doing? Can somebody tell me what we're doing tonight? Can somebody tell me. I charged my batteries. Lab batteries are charged. Batteries are charged there. What else are we doing tonight? I don't know. What else are we doing tonight? Um, Printed something. I printed something. Actually, I reprinted something. Let me find it. You may have seen this already. I printed this a little while ago uh, when I first got my resin printer. But uh, I have green resin, and it's more colorful than gray. So, done that. Now, if you want to print one of these, you got to know what it is. This is the Skull of Gul'dan for all the uh, World of Warcraft players out there. And Illidan's hand, I guess. It holds it. Now, I'm not getting into Burning Crusade. I lost three months of my life in 2019 uh, when Classic WoW relaunched. Um, so I got to do what I did in high school and throw away several months of my life again. Um, so I did that. I'm not doing that for Burning Crusade. So you should still see some weekly videos from me occasionally. I'm not going back in there. I ain't doing that again. However, this is an awesome model. Now this model is from Willow Creative on Thangs. And you know Thangs, they're sponsoring the stream. It, it, oh, they're over there. There, those guys. Thangs, they're sponsoring the show tonight. They're awesome. Willow Creative, uh, follow her on Twitter. She does a lot of cosplay and props. She is totally awesome with that stuff. And uh, she started uploading stuff to Thangs. So this is the Skull of Gul'dan, uh, Illidan's hand to hold it. These I want to try, but I'm waiting on some proper resin to come in for it. But it's a uh, resin printed chain link. So I want to give that a shot. So I got a link in the description. Go there. Check it out. Print some stuff. Because Fangs is awesome. Don't fall. I'm running out of room, by the way. I, I need more shelf space. Uh, what else is there tonight? Alas, poor Yorick. Yes, but it's Gul'dan. There is no... Oh, well, I'm pretty sure there's a quest that's like a ripoff of it. But anyways, what else? Canadians. Too long, we've been can of can't. And thanks to Sparta 3D, we are can of canning again. So go to the link in the description. I've opened it up. You should be able to enter the contest now, a few of you have. Uh, Sparta 3D, Canadian store. Printed this little Charmander here. And some of their sparkle red ABS. Uh, they have a few different colors. I'm drawing for two lots tonight at 10 p.m. Two people are going to win three spools. I believe it's of their choosing. Um, so if you're in Canada, you want to win some Sparkle ABS, that's quite awesome. Uh, go enter that contest. I'm going to draw a 10. Okay. 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 How's everyone doing tonight? Let me catch up on chat. Yeah. Video production. Yeah, Tom, if you're watching, if you're not watching, uh, Tom... Tom S, because I can I always butcher his last name. Tom 3D is building a Voron uh, V2.4. Um, a bunch of the Voron crew, including me, are in the chat, following along with his build, helping him out, making sure he puts his belts on, and uh, answering questions. So, yes, his video production is much higher than a lot of ours, uh, than mine. But uh, he's been doing the YouTube thing a lot longer than me. I just have a Sony A5100. He's got, I don't even know how many cameras. So, yes, his production values are much better, but I have music. No work today. I don't work weekends. So, hey, look. It's Toasty Boy. He's got a power inlet. This isn't the spec one. I'm still waiting for it to come in, but it's all wired up. I finished wiring it off stream because... I did not want to put you guys through wiring stream number. I don't even know how many. So, clipper time. Clipper, 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 clipper. Uh, there is no clipper config for this printer. Uh, with most Vorons, if you build it to spec, there is a stock 
Clipper config that you can go on the website or through uh, Fluid or Mainsail. There's a default config. And you just copy and paste, adjust a few things, you're good to go. This guy's running an SKR2, a Big Tree Tech SKR2. There is no config for the SKR2 for the Voron 1.8. So, for those that remember, uh, when we did it with uh, V226 back here, uh, we had to create a config for Duet. We're going to be doing that tonight for the SKR2. So, I've done a little prep, okay? I've done some prep because I don't think you guys want to sit here and watch a loading screen. The Raspberry Pi already has a SD card installed in it that has Fluid installed. So I downloaded Fluid, I flashed the SD card using Bellana Etcher, I put in my Wi-Fi info, I plugged it in, I connected to it, I made sure it connected. So we're skipping that part because I'm sure you guys don't want to see that again. So, sure I got in there. Yeah, should be good. I don't know where my little SD card went, but I'm sure I can find one. So we have that done. I'm waiting for it to boot up. And connect. And knowing my crappy home Wi-Fi, it won't connect. But we are going to go through, create a Clipper config, and we should be good to print. We might print tonight. We might print tonight. It's going to be pushing it, trying to print tonight, but we might. So we'll see. I did a little bit of cleaning before streaming. I don't know where I put my Allen keys. Allen keys. Where did I put my Allen keys? That's a good question. Where did I put my Allen keys? So fun fact about Allen keys, for those that didn't know Allen keys, how they got their name. Um, in 1963, uh, when Richard Allen, the founder of Ikea, um, wanted to sell, you know, start Ikea and get it going, um, he found a lot of people didn't have common tools at home. When they were designing the original Ikea kits uh, for furniture and whatnot, there was no standardized tooling. They couldn't design around standard tools because nobody had standard tooling at the time, right? This was the 60s. So Richard Allen got together with some engineers and they actually invented the Allen key. Um, originally it was going to be named after one of the engineers, but you know, politics and whatnot. So Richard Allen, because he funded the development, they came up with the Allen key. Um, and that's what we call it today. So that's why Ikea always comes with Allen keys because they developed the Allen key. And that's why it's an industry standard because it was such a good idea. They just made it. Yeah, I, I'm completely bullshitting. I, I just can't buy my Allen keys. However, I have to hold that story to apprentices at work. And I have gotten people to believe that. <laughs> How do you lose Allen keys? Are they under the printer? No. That wouldn't be the first time. I don't need them tonight. But I found one and I want to put it away. Okay, whatever. Let's skip that. Christopher, that's the joke. Hey, look! Guys, look! Clipper, we're connected. Okay, so obviously we we don't have a config here. Okay, so when it comes to setting up Clipper, there's three ways you can go about it. You can either a um, download a config that is for your printer, copy and paste. So like when we did the install on the Ender 3 V2, that's basically what we did. There's already a config created. We just threw it on the printer and went. Sometimes you know with a Voron. You have to go ahead and adjust, you know, your X, Y, N stop locations and some stuff like that. But for the most part, it's already there. The second option is you complete, create it completely from scratch. So this right here is the Clipper reference guide. This is every single default config, like every setting that Clipper can have is in here along with examples. That is a little too in depth. So what we're going to do is we're going to use an example config and then modify it to what we need. Now, in our case here, uh, the Voron V1.8 is an existing printer. There are configs for that. They're for a different controller board, but the config is there. So what we're going to do is take that Voron V1.8 config for probably the SKR 1.3, and we're going to go through and modify it to make it work with the SKR 2. But before we do that, 
We gotta flash the SKR. So, let's connect to Toasty Boy with Putty. Now, when it comes to installing, it's pretty much the exact same as uh, Octoprint, so Pi, Raspberry, that's how it works. You know that. And then when it comes to what we're going to be doing here, there's all this clipper stuff. We can just basically follow the standard clipper install. So, CD Clipper, Make Menu Config. Oh, hey, there we go. Now, it's an SKR2, which there is a default config example for the SKR2, but it's just the generic. So it just shells you some pins. I think it's a Core XY setup or uh, a Cartesian setup. Yeah, Cartesian setup. That's not what we're interested in. Right now, because we're making the bootloader file, we're doing this. So contains pin mappings, da 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 da. Compiled for the STMF32. So it is the 407 variant. Bootloader offset is 32. And that's it. Escape, save config, yep. Uh, Pigeon FX, five euro. No, five pound, five pound. Thank you, appreciate it. Uh, take my money, I will. Thank you very much. I can do that. So we do that, take flash, boom, and now it makes that file. While it's doing that, I need to find a, uh, I need an SD card for this. I know I have a little SD card somewhere. Should work. Yes, and I know it's probably going to come up. Um, why I'm using Fluid instead of Mainsail or Octoprint. Um, it's because I, I like the interface more. I, I just like the appearance of it. That's that's pretty much it. I just like the look. Oh, okay, this is a bad SD card. Don't use this SD card. This is a bad SD card. So cancel, cancel. I've got too many bad SD cards. Um... There we go. Because you don't need the SD card once it's uh, installed. Like, I've I, I've installed Clipper on how many things? I should have a cheap SD card somewhere. Uh, Diego, 2376. Greetings from Double T. Greetings from Canada on a lovely Saturday night. There we go. Okay, so now we need a uh, win SCP. New session. New session. There we go. That's not it. And it's SFTP, uh, Pi, Raspberry, Christopher Miller, $5, thank you, appreciate it, SD card found, yes.
clipper.bin. That's what we want. Drag and drop it there. And then you have to rename it to firmware.bin. Go. That's renamed. Uh, let me catch up on chat. Probably a bunch of questions tonight. Um, Kiao. I don't use Kiao. Um. Yeah, I don't. I just use, I don't switch between the two. Um. Like I have some machines run Clipper, some run that. Um. Okay, now I gotta power cycle it. Which, where is the reset button on this guy? Right here. Okay, I think that's it. I don't think I have to power cycle it. So before it said firmware.bin, now it just says firmware, all capital letters. That means the flash was successful. It means um, we go into Moonraker or into Clipper, force a refresh. There we go. So we should be good there. This guy around. Okay, so example config. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the uh, Voron config. There is only, yeah, that's only a 250. I'm starting to get to the point where I don't know what I have on this computer that is visible for public release yet. I know it's the old one. I just honestly downloaded it so that uh, I had a .cfg file that I could modify. Okay, so uh, VR on one, DXF, docs, drawings, docs? No, it's... Oh, Clipper config, there we go. I don't want to down... Oh wait, I actually, no, there is a whole... I already downloaded the whole file. Big upload. Do I have a, an example config? Download. I know I downloaded it. Oh, I do. Okay. So the SKR 1.31 one is from March 6th. Oh, yeah, that's when it was downloaded. And yeah, we'll go with that one. I don't think there's any difference between the uh, 1.3 and the 1.4, just pins. So there we go. Name. Record.cfg. Save. There we go. Restart. Now it's probably going to complain. Uh, oh, I don't think I have a capital.
Wrong button. Yeah, close. Printer.cfg. There we go. There we go. See, so now it's complaining of the config being wrong, which we know it's going to be wrong. So now we're going to have to take this and make it work for the SKR2. So this is going to be a bunch of stuff. So let me delete a bunch of stuff. So now we got to find our serial ID thingy. So there's our address. That's the first thing you got to have is your address. Copy. There we go. Restart. Now it should be able to talk to it now. However, um, obviously pinouts are wrong. So at this point, you're at the point where you've got clippers installed on your MCU. You got clippers installed on your Raspberry Pi. You have your config. The problem is pins aren't assigned. Okay. So it's, it, the pins are not what you need. So you need a pin map. Um, there's a few ways of going about this and how they're listed. Um, let me pull up the spider because I had to do this on the spider. Um, and it's different vendors show it different ways. So like on the spider here, on their GitHub, um, you have like feature, you know, here's your pin definitions, motor, X, Y, or X step direction enable, and uh, whatever this one is. Um, there's your pin. So you're looking for this. This is your number, your STM32 pin. That's what you're looking for. On uh, Big Tree Tech, uh, you have this. Okay. So for my X end stop, it is uh, PC1 is the pin for my X end stop, for example, there. So now what you do, and this is why I'm playing music right now is you basically go through here and you adjust every pin to match this map for your motors. Okay. Should be using an impact. <laughs> uh, Tom and his power tools. Um, I like the spider listing more, Nick Young. Um, each one has an advantage. Personally, I like the map if you're working with a board for the first time. Because in this case, I can literally just reference what I have plugged in and go, hey, um, I plugged in something to here. Okay, that's why I end stop there. Like, I, I, you have a visual reference instead of just a, a chart, okay? Um, it, it's a personal thing. Um, only if I paint flames on the side. David, David, David. Everyone say hi, David. Everyone say hi in chat. Hi, David. Um, the problems with the V1 of the spider. I, mine's running up, mine's running and printing, so if I run into an issue, I'll, I'll take it apart and clean the rosin off, but, um, mine's working just fine, so, so, let's, uh, do this now, let me see if I can, uh, Windows, do your Windows thing, goes there, okay. Go. There we go. Aha! There we go. Okay, so enjoy the music. Um, I'll try and keep track of chat, and I'll I'll talk through what I'm going through. 
But uh, for the most part, I'm going to be doing text editing. So aren't you glad we're not doing wiring tonight, guys? It's, it's so great. We're doing configuration. But we might push plastic. Okay, stepper X. So step in for stepper X is PE2. Oh, and by the way, um, directions like the enable, like the little exclamation part, uh, make sure you, you try and keep those. Like, you shouldn't have to play with those. So in my case, Stepper X is my A motor because I uh, X is a lower letter and A is a lower letter. So in my case is A. Pin. It's PE1. Why did that save? Step pin is PE2. There we go. Enable pin. It's PE3. And stop pin. So my X end stop is PC1. I haven't played with can stuff yet. Uncomment for a 250 build. I can do that. Go. Stepper X, UART pin is PE0. Now, this is a 400 or a, a 0.9 degree. So, this is actually 400 here. Go. Save. Okay, stepper Y, which is my B motor. So I'm probably gonna have to change my motor direction. My motors are probably gonna be backwards. stop pin is stepper Y, uh, which is ba -ba -ba, PC3. And it's a 250 build. And the UART pin is PD3. Now there's two Z steppers, obviously. So this is your left one. Um, so I have them actually plugged into E0 and E1. So I believe E0 is on my left here, which I can always swap them if I need to. So E0 for me is PD15. Don't forget. Direction pin. PD14. Enable pin is PD13. Rotation distance should be good. And PC6 for that. See, this is why, if you look here, 
This is why I use, when I have multiple Zen motors, I use the extruders because all controller boards seem to use the same nomenclature where no matter how many board or how many steppers you have on the board, you have X, Y, Z. Sometimes there's uh, two plugs for Z, but usually there's only one Z. And then you have E0 to however many. So on the spider, it is X, Y, Z, E0, one, two, three, four, because there's five. So I always put my on multiple Z setups. Odds are you're probably gonna have more Z than extruders. Most of us honestly only run one extruder, okay? So I'll make, you know, on my spider config here for V226, I have my Z motors, Z0 to Z3 as E0 to E3. It just makes it easier when you're looking at the config and then I just throw the extruder on Z. So that's how I do it. So in this case, Z1 is E1. 11, direction pin, PD10, enable pin, PD13, and PD12. Uh, spider. Yeah, they're coming out with the 1.1 spider. So extruder, and this is now in Z0. How many people do we have right now? 225. Yeah, I kind of figured we'd have a little bit less today. Step pin, because uh, let's be honest, this is a, a, a super awesome, uh, thrilling stream where I am setting up a clipper Direction pin. Oh, PA eight. Enable pin. One. I'm gonna have to update this because right now this is set up for um, an LGX or correction, a regular Bond Tech. So can't show Toasty Boy. Let me pull the config off of another printer. Scooter. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it in here. Um, just because I'm going to actually try and push this uh, config after I clean it up to public. So I know um, a lot of people are probably going to be using this in the future. There we go. There we go. Okay. So heater pin is uh, H E. Yeah, because it's one hot end. Or no, which one is it? It's H E zero, right? Let me double check. Yeah, H is zero. Which is PD three. Uh, it is a, not that it's a, Beta 3950. Sensor pin. So sensor pin is PA2. PA2 
PA15 mix Z with E0. Oh, what I do? Extruder is Z. Oh, PA15. Yep. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Keith. Honestly, uh, the scans that my, my spider is working just fine. I'm having zero issues with it. Um, E0. PD0, yeah. Okay, actually, uh, I plugged that in right. Oh, I did that wrong. I gotta move that. Okay. So I have to move. Can you unplug a thermistor while the printer's on? I think you can. I don't think it's gonna damage anything. Yeah, they're Mr. Bed. There we go. Plugged in through Mr. Bed to through Mr. One. There we go. Yeah, you can plug it through Mr. It causes a runaway. Everyone knows that. There we go. Okay, where are we at? So we got burner heater bed. So the bed is heated by PD7. You know, it's controlled by the SSR. We have the SSR plugged into the bed port because bed is bed. Remember, when, you, when you're setting up your printer, you, you want to make it as, uh, you, you really want to make it as uh, idiot proof as possible. You, you want to make it when you're setting up your config, you can go bed is bed. So, you know, you can hook the SSR up to pretty much any pin that's like five volts. Um, bed is bed. Simple. Hello. Okay, heater hot end fan. So we have our hot end fan is three, which is H E zero, I believe. Really wish these were labeled. That's one thing I'm not a huge fan of on the uh, SKRs is the the silk screen on the front is kind of poopy. They they don't have a lot of info. They silk screen everything on the back. So if you're just looking at it and you have something plugged into a port and you don't know what's plugged into that port and you're just looking at the port, you you can't. You got to reference the docs. You got to look at this and go, okay, that is. Oh, it's plugged in there. Okay, that's fan zero. Like you can't just look at it and say, it says above it fan zero or whatever. So heater hot end fan is that. Uh, part cooling fan is fan one, which is PD six. Keith, what is PB34? Um, I don't have an exhaust fan. I'm probably going to have, or I'm not running an exhaust on this at all. And I am going to have to figure out a fan for cooling the controller. I haven't figured that out yet. Okay, idle timeout, homing override, da 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 da, da G code. 
Uh, mentioning a tethering issue with the spider. I've never... I have no idea. So tilt. Okay, so uncomment this for a 350. So this is for adjusting your bed left to right. And this is C tilt adjust and comment below for 250. Okay, because it's a 250 build and mesh. Go. All that. G code. Blah, 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 blah. I don't know what that is. Da, da, da. Save. So. Save and restart. Option Z positions and Z tilt must be specified. Oh. Flippy not connected. Uh, can you go back to Zephyr Z? There was a typo. Oh. Yeah, let me try a hard reset here. Well, that's doing its thing. Hey, everyone. Go in the description. There's two reasons you should go to the description. One, you should check out our awesome sponsor, Thangs. Um, print off this awesome skull of Gul'dan from Willow Creative. You could do all the, uh, if you want to do a, a World of Warcraft, uh, uh, Othello? No, not Othello. Which one is the Yorick line from? Which Shakespeare play? I don't know. We should go do that. And also, if you're Canadian, go down there, enter the contest to win. Uh, I'm giving away two lots. So two people are going to win three spools of Sparkle ABS from Sparta 3D. There we go. Okay, it's talking again. Uh, Luke, $5. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks for the great Voron content. You have inspired me to add a Voron to my printer collection. You should do that. They multiply. There's also a zero down there. See? There's the V0. It's not neglected, guys. It's, it's still there behind chat. It wants to be with you guys, with chat. Okay, it's yelling at me. What did I forget? I forgot position max. I got it out of that. Max. Hamlet. Okay, Hamlet. There we go. There we go. Oh, I forgot that. Okay. So, um, you need your position max, obviously. Save and restart. Unknown. Oh. Okay, so P1, I forgot a pin. So was that P1.2? P. Oh, I forgot some pins. Oh, the probe stuff. I forgot all the probe stuff. Okay. So let me see here. So stepper Z. Oh man, I, I I glossed over a bunch of stuff here. But hey, at least it's talking. Come on. Let's do your thing. Okay. So my Z end stop. 
Um, I have two ZN stops. Remember that. This is Clipper. This is a Voron. We got two ZN stops. We got our Omron probe in here. And then we also have a uh, clicky switch that if you watch Tom's uh, stream last week, he was playing with it. It's fun. So in this case here, I have my actual end stop. The Z clicky end stop is my end stop. So that is Z stop. So that's PC zero. Okay. And then my probe is actually plugged into E extruder uh, detect. So E debt or E zero debt, whatever. I have it plugged in there. So that is PC two. Go. Save and restart. Check Y2. Make sure it's not ready. Oh. See, this is another reason I'm I'm doing this on purpose so I can show you guys how Clipper like lets you know when you screw up making the config. That, that big brain, right? Yeah. Totally not actually just screwing it up. Okay. Um what was it yelling at me about? I didn't even check. Uh, DP14. Oh, English. 14. Oh, I'm assuming uh, that should just be uh, stepper Z. It should just be. Oh, wow, I'm dyslexic. It's PD14. PD14. Okay, uh, check Y2. Direction point. No direction point. Uh, check Y2. PD3. I think we're okay there for direction for that. Okay. Try this again. We can restart. Oh. Oh, 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 get in there. We need to add some stuff to our config that Fluid wants. I always forget that stuff. Let's just go all the way to the bottom because it's all macro stuff. So, we need this. Display status, you know, we're not, I don't have a screen on this guy. And I know you could pull, pull this into like a, a normal config, like there's a way to pull it in, but I can't remember it right now. So I'm just going to do what it tells me to do, macros. Pause macro. Okay, resume macro. And a cancel print macro. Save and restart. Uh, making a custom 1.8 frame like a heave art. Cool. Printer is ready. Connecting. Tells you how much free space you got on your SD card. Load all the things. Cancel print macro not found. I have a cancel print macro. It's right there. No, oh, it didn't save properly. Custom self-config macro, that is a little beyond. You would have to write a whole UI thing that would be able to insert stuff into the config, and that is not something I have the ability to do. Um, I know there was, like, talk of creating, like, a kind of like how uh, Clip, or Clipper, how uh, RepRap Firmware has that website you can go to and just tell, it asks you everything, and then it spits out a config based on what you tell it. 
There is some talk of doing that, but I don't know if that went anywhere because you would have to have all the pins for every controller board out there. And it's easier to do for rep wrap because like up until lately, it was like the duet was the only board. So, and I don't know if their configurator actually even supports anything but duets. Hey, look. Um, we have temperatures. Oh my God. We've got temperatures. Look at this, guys. It's not yelling at me. It's 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 doing its thing. Okay, let me let me drop the bed a bit. Okay. Drop in the bed. Simply for the fact that um, I don't like crashing stuff, especially on a brand new printer. So. Let me find it here. So this right here. This is basically your pre-flight checklist for Clipper. Okay. Um, go through this before you, you do anything. So you want to make sure, according to this, everything moves freely. Oh, hey, everything moves freely. I just moved my set. Okay. Verify end stops. Hey, we're running fluid. Uh, Main sale also has this feature. Um, where is it? End stops. So you go to tune, end stops, refresh. They're all open. Okay. Let me, let me do, drive that home. Oh, that's open. Oh, triggered. Not triggered. Triggered. Okay. Drive that in there. Okay, so let me take out the noise canceling headphones so I can hear the clicking. Oh. Oh, that's a problem. Ooh. Oh, oh, gentlemen. Gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. We have ourselves our first boggle of the night. We, we have, we have, we have a conundrum. We have a, uh, an issue. So big of an issue, I'm bringing out the stripper cam. What is different between this guy and a standard 1.8 when it comes to the tool head? What, what have we done different with the tool head on this guy? Uh, Emmanuel, five ninety nine. Thank you, appreciate it. Uh, we'll watch the rest later. Have a good night. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Have a good night. LGX, Matuzzi, got it right. We are running an LGX with the LGX. We got this big, big chungus of a of a uh, wire cover. Okay. The problem is, boop. She ain't got the room, Captain. We are short. <laughs> Quite a bit. How am I going to fix this? How am I going to fix this? Well, I, I could just take the ca cable cover off. Which... Now I need to find my Allen keys. How did I lose my Allen keys? Seriously, how did I lose my Allen keys? I didn't use them for anything. Like, I, I seriously, how did I lose my Allen keys? You're in a bright red container. Oh, there they are. Found them. Okay. Uh, which one is best for accuracy at high speed? They're all good. Um, the Core XY one's either V1 or V2. Nips. H 
Patreon stream where I look for my Allen keys for three hours. Hey man, I streamed sorting screws at one point, so uh, anything's a possibility. Okay, let's see here. There we go. Take the wire covers off. Look at that. They're just exposed. Okay. So, oh, you can't even see it. Okay. Hey, look. There you go. Okay, so see? So right now, nothing was triggered. Right? Nothing. Refresh. Triggered. Okay, sweet. All the way to the back. Triggered. Push the end stop. Hey, it's all triggered. So, theoretically, it'll home. Might... Will this end stop cover work? This one might work. Oh, that's gonna hit two. Crud. No end stop cover for now. Guess I won't be getting my cereal tonight, boys! No cereal tonight. Okay. I need the right Allen key. How do I have two? Okay, whatever. <laughs> okay, so that is that. Now we're gonna do stepper motor buzz. So with the stepper motor buzz, what you're doing right now, you're checking to make sure your motors are moving um, when you tell them to move. So in this case, we're gonna check our Z motors, okay? So how it works, they'll move five or five or 10 times, I can't remember. Up, down, up, down. And it's always up, down, up, down. So this is very critical, especially with uh, this guy here and this one because of the med mesh, if you have it wrong, your gantry is gonna go woo. Um, I've seen people like severely torque these apart, like, because their motors were backwards and it tried to stabilize this way to make it even. And instead, because the motors were backwards, it went woo even worse. And these motors are uh, beefy. So you got two Z motors. So we got it right there, stepper buzz, stepper Z. Just said, you don't need to put Z zero, just said, I think. And it should move up, down, up, down. If I hit the right button. Flipper state shut down. Unable to read TMC, you are at stepper's head, register. Ooh, what's this? That's a new one. Nope. Take a looky here. Unable to register. Oh, uh, you know what? Uh, let me see here. So Zephyr stat is extruder zero. So step pin is PD15, direction pin, enable pin is. Oh, did I screw that up? Oh, it's PC7. And then end stop PC0. UART pin is PC6.
себя. We might have to uh, Yeah, it just says PC6, yeah. Okay. Try again. Oh. Shut down. Unable to read TMC UART Stepper Z. Yeah, you don't want that. If you have the 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 um, the shim in the middle of the bearing stack, the bearings can kind of can't. You you don't want that. Ray, you know what? Here, let me let me try a different motor. Let me try a different motor, just to see if this is just something with my uh, weird X or we'll try a stepper X. Ready? Okay. Clipper state shutdown. So let me let me go dig in here. Let me go digging. Uh, do I not have the jumpers in the right spot on the board? That might be an issue. Let me let me turn the printer off. Old stepper. Let's see what we got. Oh, just in case. Paranoid. Okay, so I need one jumper by the 100. Yeah, one jumper, and it's next to the 100. Yeah, okay, so that's right. No, the jumpers are in the right spots, but it's in UART mode, so it's just the uh, the one jumper. So put it there. Let me go check. Uh, I don't have it up. Good. Okay. Let me let me check the. Uh, Don't accidentally flash. Oh. Uh, Big tree tech. There we go. Yeah, they're BTT drivers. Um, What's more? What's my error? I'm checking the Discord. Yeah, they're Big Tree Tech, which are UART, right? Like, they should be UART, or do I need all those pins in it? Because uh, 2209s are UART, if I'm not mistaken, right? Oh, let me check SKR2. SKR2. Yeah, 
Yeah, there you are. Yeah, there you are. So I, I just have the... User manual. Yep, that one's right. Uh, you may need to set PC 13 as static output to high. Uh, let me take a looky loo at that. Uh, where would that be, uh, Timothy? No, I don't have a PT-100. Was that part of the, the make config part? I can't remember. Okay, so where is PC-13? Let me, let me check something here. Now this isn't uh, set it as an output pin in Flipper. Big. Okay. Output pin, my pin. Uh, static output. TC thirteen, you said PC thirteen. Where is PC thirteen? Start. See if it complains. Go. Okay, so it seems to be alive. Let's try this again. Step percent. Up, down, up, down. Nope, crashed. Oh, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? Output pin, pin. Oh, motor power. Okay, so. Steering system. Okay, so let me just see here. Oh, this right here is what Kayla's saying. Save and restart. Save and restart. There we go. Okay. Try again. Oh! Okay. 
I don't know which way it's going, so I gotta wait for it to finish, but it's working! Thank you! Uh, who was that? Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Who was that? Kayla and... Timothy, everyone! Kayla, Timothy, everyone! High fives! Joel, high fives are Joel saying, everyone clap! Golf clap, everyone! Golf clap! Thank you guys! Thank you, appreciate that! See, this is the whole thing. This whole streaming setup, buying the cameras, setting up everything, the whole setup and everything. It's honestly just so I have people to help me when I'm building these things. That's a, that's the only reason. Because honestly, people people have uh, mentioned like, oh, you, you know so much. It's like, no. I, I'm the equivalent of like, you don't need to be a piano master to teach people piano. You just have to be one lesson ahead of your student. I'm still learning all this stuff. I'm below the surface on a lot of things. I I need to sit there and read the manual. But apparently I'm good at getting some info across in good ways. And I think that helps a lot of people. So that's why I just stream a lot. Because we're all in this together. So. Uh, nice Sparta 3D box you got there. Yes, it is. They are uh, doing a giveaway. That's why it's there. It's uh, draw your attention. So. If you're Canadian, make sure you get entered there. And if you're not Canadian, that sucks. But also, you should check out our sponsor, thanks. Okay, so separate bus. So we should be going up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay, it's working. So, stepper Z, which is my left motor, is doing that. So now, we're checking stepper Z2, which is on the right. But it's, it's Z1. Because in computer, there it starts at zero. So, finish. Up, down, up, down. Up, down, up, down. There we go. So we're getting proper Z movement. We're good there. Um, I'm going to buzz the X and Y, but because it's core XY, I, I never remember which way I should be looking. So I'm just going to make sure uh, the motor is moving. And then uh, we're going to do the YOLO and home it and turn the power off if it going the wrong way. Okay, so stepper X is over there. It's A. It's... Let me put, let me put this camera on so you can at least see it. And stepper Y. See? Ooh, actually, no. We're getting no movement out of stepper Y. We're getting no movement out of stepper Y. We're getting no movement out of stepper Y. The config! Step Y. Oh. Where is that? That. That. Close that. Close that. Close that. The view over there. Minimize. Close that. Okay, open everything back up. Got too many things open. Okay, so stepper Y is not moving. Why is stepper Y not moving? So stepper Y is... Step pin, PD5, yes. Direction pin, PD4, yes. Enable pin is P... Oh, that's why, PD6. I have the wrong pin, that's why. Step for Y is PD6 for enable. And then the UART pin is PD3. There we go. I forgot to change the enable pin. Save. Nope, I just had the wrong config. 
Beer time is not beer time, it's only 9.15. Gotta make it at least till 10. Or at least PID 2. Okay, so step or Y. Let's try this again. I'm getting nothing. I'm getting nothing. Step or X. I'm getting nothing. Why am I getting nothing? I'm getting nothing now. Step or Z. That one's doing it. Okay, is that it's working? X is working. Try Y. Y, Y. Uh, da, 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 da. Stepper Y. We are, we are getting no movement out of Stepper Y. Something with the enable pin, I think. Because it, it, it's locking on. Yeah, so something, it's enabled. It, it's staying enabled. Um, let's see here. Stepper Y, step pin is PD5, direction pin is PD4, oh, I need to enable it, I forgot, I need to uh, have a little, little exclamation, okay, save and restart, there we go, everyone goes right to checking wire and plugs, right off the bat, wire and plugs, you gotta check wire and plugs, it's not always wire and plugs, believe, you should, you should have faith in your wiring. I have faith in the... Oh, wait, I didn't even buy this limb. I wired this limb myself. And if you don't have faith in yourself, just believe in me. Because I believe in you. Except for why. Movement. We're good. So... Um, I'm gonna assume extruder is working. We'll check extruder later when we try to make some plastic. Now comes the fun part, where I try to home um, something, and if it goes the wrong direction, we smash the off button. So let me pull the charts up. Help. Documentation. Maintenance guys, is this it? Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Nope. Initial startup. Where is. There we go. This right here. Open in a new tab. These images right here are your friends when it comes to Core XY, or in the Switch Wires case, Core XZ. So. You're going to tell it to home and odds are it's going to go the wrong direction. So you look at this and you tell it to home. If it moves, X moves. Okay. And Y moves. Okay. You're good. If the, when you tell it to move X and it moves to the back and you tell it to home Y and it moves to the right, you're got to invert your a stepper like easy peasy, right? So. I'm going to try and home X 
and see where it goes. If it goes the wrong way, we kill power. You can smash the motor power toggle in the UE now, but reset button and power is probably better. Yes. Okay, X, go home. Go the wrong way. <laughs> We're going the wrong way. Well, let's take a look here. So X was going backwards. And I'm assuming Y is going... Because I have my motors backwards. So I'm going to invert both motors in the config because I have them backwards. Because I actually did put them backwards. Um, the default config has the A motor being the Y motor. I like X because they're both like X is lower, Y is lower. Um, you know how it be. A or A and X are lower letters, numbers. Um, oh, that did not pop up. Why did that not pop up? Uh, Project R3D, hundred dollars. Thank you, man, I appreciate it. Have you ever wondered how many hamsters running on a wheel it would take to power a 3D printer? Uh, with the life expectancy of a hamster being two years, you would need a lot of hamsters over time. Weird thought of the day. Have a good day, everyone. Cheers, man. Cheers. Project R3D, if you are looking for basically a super awesome machine like one of these, but you don't want to build it because Warren's got to build them, check out the data list. It's a commercial uh, rail core. It's an awesome beast of a printer. Joel has a bunch of videos on it. So I'm sure some other people do as well. Check them out. Uh, they are awesome. Project R3D, the data list. It is a commercial beast of a printer. What was I doing? I got completely distracted. You're awesome, by the way. Um, That is a thought, though. How efficient could you make a printer? Because now, now you got me thinking uh, there, Project R3D. So, okay, so yes, hamsters. Hamsters are um, not the most efficient power source, right? They're, they're not. They're hamsters, okay? And they got to spin the wheel, and you're going to lose power, so... How efficient could you make a 3D printer? Obviously, you're going PLA because heating a bed is that's energy. 30 watt heater is it? Would it be better to run a, a lower powered heater continuously or a higher power heater with a thermal mass infrequently? Stepper motors go slow. NEMA 14s, NEMA 11s. I wonder how efficient of a 3D printer you could really build. Anyways. Let's invert some motors. Um, I believe it's the X... No. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to... Because I have them plugged in backwards, I'm going to invert the directions in both. Heaters are 100% efficient. Uh, Nero's a stealth advertiser in Project R3D. <laughs> I just think they're neat. I'm allowed to like other printers. Okay, um, we're back online. Let's try homing X again and see where we go. Oh! Why? God dang it. Okay, so X is good, but Y is wrong. So if X is good and Y is going to the front, steppers are swapped, swap A and B connectors. Dang it. Okay. So you have two options here. You can either unplug the steppers and just go, whoop, 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 or you can swap all the pins. We're going to swap the steppers and just go huh, huh, huh. easy peasy. Hey, I got it half right.
actually, at this point, I'm going to have to find a dowel. So I don't have a right size pin for this. I'm going to have to make one. So let me... Move the bed up. Because now we have to figure out where our Z probe sits at and lives at. Okay, so that kind of goes there. Okay. Okay. So there's that. There's that. Go. Home X. Okay. Home Y. Okay. Now comes the part where we got to move everything. Because I am at, if you look at my config, uh, X250, Y250, okay? So the problem is I have to have the end stop um, uh, overhead camera for this. You know, you probably, it's not going to be great for it. That strip of camera that's facing the thing. So if you look at it, anything visible, there we go. Um, I gotta move the bed over. Because right now, at X max, I am not lined up with the uh, end stop. My Z switch is not lined up. So what we're gonna have to do is shift the whole bed over. Just use an impact. No, and yet. We're gonna have to shift you over. Okay. And then we are gonna have to shift our Z end stop pod thingy over. So that it is directly underneath the bed. Or underneath the uh, the nozzle. So let me move front. No, wrong way. that, that's that, slide that underneath, okay, so that is there, so now our Z clicky switch is directly underneath the nozzle, now you can move your bed back um, and you basically want to air gap it. So, you can see it right there. See how we have an air gap right here? You want this air gap. So this pin is now right underneath your nozzle and you want probably about a two millimeter, three, honestly, the more the better, but you know, the, you're gonna lose print space. But you, you do want an air gap here because you don't want the heat from the bed getting to the uh, the nozzle. Something fell outside my door. Oh, Koda, come here. Koda. Koda. Seriously? 
The dog came down, knocked the chair over outside in the hallway, and then left. Okay. Dog's gonna dog. So. Shift you over just a bit. Now, honestly, this machine isn't really like, I don't need print space on this machine. Um, this machine is kind of a small volume thing. So I'm gonna air gap it by quite a bit. Uh, probably about closer to three millimeters. Uh, simply for the fact that um, I, I want an air gap. Go. Then you can just quickly check, make sure your bed is somewhat square. Three. Okay, take it down. Can't take that one down. Move you out of the way. So now I need to find a pin. <laughs> Uses my end stop pin. Because this pin is uh you can see if he's out there. He, I think he got, yeah, he got scared. He's a, uh, he's an older pupper, so he gets uh, frightened easily. And he knocked over a chair in the hallway. And literally, when I peeked my head out there, he was going upstairs. So he, he came down and he's like, I ain't having this, and he left. So sorry, guys, no pupper. I'm scrounging through my pins because I don't have a, a really good one made. Eh, that'll work. Yeah, that'll work good enough. Zed motors went the wrong way. I'll figure out the pin lengths later. Right now it's sitting roughly like probably half a mil under. Um, My motors went backwards. So let's swap the direction. Because when I tried to home, it went up. Because normally the bed's supposed to drop out of the way and then move. Yes, on Vorons, you home to XY max. Because it's easier to have your end stops in the back corner than it would be up here at the front. Because in the front here, you'd have to... You could have one on the tool head, yeah, but you'd have to put one here and run a wire. So since all the wires are going through the back right corner, it's easier to have them uh, there.
That's right. I goofed. Um, I forgot to write those numbers just now. It was 250 and 233, I want to say. You have to put in your config, and I'll show you here in a second, the location of your switch. I didn't do that. So what happened was it's defaulted to go to like zero, zero to do it. So hopefully you have enough time as it slowly moves across here to realize you goofed and kill the power before it drives the hot end into the bed. <laughs> okay, so let's, uh, let's home XY. So it's 250. Uh, X is 250 and Y is 224. Save and restart. Okay, so now when I hit home all, bed should drop. Bed should drop and it should home X, Y, and then come down on the clicky switch. Uh, ever thought about glass bed and the clicky probe? Uh, the glass bed, I, I used to run, um, I used to run glass beds on my original V1. Um, the problem is, is these use inductive probes and inductive don't work off glass. So you could use the Z clicky switch still. Um, but the problem is you, you can't tram out the bed. Okay. Bed drops. Home X. Home Y. Bring her on the power switch. Oops. Okay, so I can actually move it up a bit. Okay, that's good. That's good. So it's actually Z223. So I'll adjust that. Okay. There we go. Um, so now everything should be good. Um, Omex, Y, and Z. Um, did I create temperature table to your, for your probe? No. Um, Remember, with the Voron, uh, the V1 and the V2, the probe is used for gantry tramming or the uh, mesh or whatever. It's not used for your Z offset. So as long as it doesn't drift during the probe routine itself, you don't need to like temperature offset it like you do on like a Prusa and whatnot, where you have to like, because it's also your your end stop for your, your Z0. So that little nozzle clicky switch there sets your Z0 before you print. 
So that's why you see a lot of people do a 10 minute heat soak. That's just to let everything kind of get to temperature and equalize. But in terms of the bed probe itself, it's accurate within its temperature, okay? So the accuracy changes with drift or with temperature, okay? So if, if you probe something at room temperature and then you probe after you've been letting the chamber heat soak for 10 minutes at ABS temperatures, um, your number will be different, okay? You will get different results. However, if you run the probing routine and check accuracy at room temperature and you run that same probing routine and check accuracy at ABS temperature, the accuracy is pretty much the same. Okay, so yes, it drifts with temperature, but it's accurate at whatever temperature you, you check it at. So that's why we don't have to worry about setting like a temperature chart for drift or anything, because as long as it doesn't change when you do your, your little quick uh, routine there, um, it shouldn't really affect anything. Um, let's see if Z tilt works. And I got my finger on the power just in case the probe don't work. Nope. Okay, that don't work. Probe don't work. Okay, probe don't work. What is, uh, it's been a while. What is the, the end stop check for the probe? Ductive probe check. Yeah, query probe. Okay. Probe is open. Something metal under the probe. Probe is open. Probe is not stripping. System. Okay, edit. Probe. Uh, pin PC2. Maybe I need to turn that off. open. Probe is open. Um, I am using a whatever probe that I had. It's a uh, one of the Omron style probes. Um, probe accuracy. Should sugar trigger. No, oh, I'm getting lucky. Okay, let me check here. Let me check my wiring. So, red is 24 volts, and it should be getting 24 volts. Check the pin out, make sure it is getting 24 volts. Uh, so we are drawing 24 volts from fan 4, which should be right by the outside. So yeah, so we're getting 24 volts from there. Blue is ground, and that's the red. Uh, do I got uh, ground and signal mixed up? I don't have a LED. Now, the battery 85 should be correct. Oh man, I think I have them backwards. I think I have SIG and ground backwards. 
Multimeter out. By the way, once we get the probe going, I can PID tune and then we can print. Continuity. Okay, so. Check here. Yeah, so blue is ground. Okay. So blue is ground. And that's the middle one. So that is that one. That'll do it. So blue is ground and I'm having, yep, I got SIG and ground mixed up. Crud. So that means I was sending 24 volts to ground at least. Hopefully I didn't break anything. Black is signal, blue is ground, so. Yeah. So black is signal. So that's signal. And signal is that, so I gotta swap these two. But I can't just swap the pins because I got a bloody resistor on it. So I'm gonna have to solder, shoot. Poopy. Well, no sparks, hopefully. Okay, unplug power just to be safe. I wish I had the tool that I could refit, I could fix micro fits or swap out micro fit pins because I don't have that and that would make my life so much easier right now. Okay. So I'm going to cut these wires and swap them. Uh, Ari Chris, $50 Australian. Appreciate it. Shout out to Tale, Tala, Talale, Talale. Appreciate it. 
Uh, the diode. Yes, the diode. Okay, so I'm going to cut, strip, and crimp. Close up, yeah. Well, all I'm doing is just re-soldering two wires. Okay. Uh, yeah, Sparta 3D draw it a minute. So I will be drawing for six spools of filament. Two people are winning, three each. Because I'd rather give it to two than one. I'm sure you'd like to see more than one person win. Okay, so double check here. So ground is the middle. And then PC2, which is SIG, would be on the bottom. So that's near the steppers. Thank you. 
Uh, neck guy, welcome to Benji. Thank you for coming a member. Let's make sure everything's good here before, because I'm all super paranoid right now. I will do the draw in a second. I know. I'm just really paranoid right now. I don't want to accidentally fry anything else. is in the middle. Okay, grab my heat gun. Yes, I have an octopus. That's going to go in, uh, in Toasty Boy, or in Tall Boy, sorry. So let me just double check this guy one more time. He's super paranoid. So. Is signal so black is a far That's good. Give it power. Turn it on. No sparks. Let me quarry probes and then uh, I'll do the draw. Uh, what's the advice on bearing stacks? Bearing stacks, I like bearing stacks over tooth idler because the bearings have beefier bearings in them. Um, they don't explode as easily as the tooth idler ones do. Um, you just have to be careful not to over tighten your belts. If you over tighten your belts on smooth idlers, that's where you get the teeth imprint. But if you don't over tighten your belts, there's enough teeth in contact with the smooth idler at all times. You really shouldn't see um, an issue. Quarry probe open. Can't see anything. Triggered. Oh yeah. Okay. Um. Home all. Okay, uh, Z tilt to adjust. There we go. So right now it's it's doing left right and it's taking out the racking between the two different uh, lead screws.
<laughs> Taking a sweet time. There we go. There we go. Okay. How many points to find a plane? All of them. Let's do a draw, guys. Let's do a draw. I left it open longer than I should have. 50 people entered. You know what? I'll give you I'll give you one minute. One minute. Don't forget to like that smash button. And remember, open to anyone in Canada. You have to be in Canada. If you're not in Canada, you ain't gonna win. But if you have, you know, your, your Uncle Mike from Canmore and you have his address and you want to ship it to him, yeah, that works too. So what is it? Uh, Wheel of Names. So, your Uncle Mike lost all his stuff in a boating accident. Uh, and you want to get Mike from Canmore a little, another chance. Okay. Closing it in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. It doesn't matter because there's a delay anyways. So it is closed. Two more people entered. Okay, Sparta 3D giveaway. So I'm going to be drawing two names, okay? Somebody keeps putting my name in. Please don't do that. I don't need to win. Let's do a draw, guys. So I'm going to draw twice. If you win, you're going to be removed. So you can't win twice. Um, let's help my YouTube algorithm out. Somebody give me a number between five and seven. Between five and seven. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, here we go. And three, two, one, go! Congratulations, Joel! Let me find your email address. Save that there. Congratulations, Joel. And now, remove you. Somebody give me a number between three and six. Let's do three and six. Number between three and six. Three. Works for me. One, two, three, and go. Oh, 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 ooh. Ryan. Ryan Wilson. Where'd your email address go? Ryan, Ryan. There's Ryan. There you go. There we go. Okay, Ryan and Joel, congratulations, guys. Congratulations. You each get, I think you get a choice of what spool, uh, what color you're gonna go with. But uh, yeah, congratulations. Okay. Screws, tilt, calculate. Yeah, so let's go to here. Help, documentation. That's not documentation. Help. Documentation. There we go. The build. Initial startup. Let's see. I'm, I'm trying to, to go through like what a newbie would go through right now because I know what I would do right now. Um, the end stop pin. We got all that. Oh, Z offset. Yes, Z offset. So, tilt. Uh, there are two macros built in the clipper to assist with this function. The first run bed tilt macro. This will go back and forth between the predefined points to level the two Z motors. This setting is dynamically changed and nothing will need to be saved. Second run screw tilt calculate macro. It will check three positions to find and screw tilt adjust. Then return how much to adjust the front thumb screw. There we go. So I said dead tilt adjust and now we need to do 
Z tilt calculate. So what it's going to do now, it is because how it works, it trams out left to right, but front to back, you still have to adjust this little screw right here. So what it's going to do now is probe three points in a triangle and tell you how much to adjust that screw by to make everything flat. So uh, front screw counterclockwise half a turn. I'm assuming that's what it means by 29. So if I little string on it, little tick on it, counterclockwise. So if I'm looking at it like a clock, So tilt calculate. Uh, black is out of stock right now. Oh, that sucks. Honestly, um, the purple, like I've printed a bunch of stuff in it. Um, it's a really nice color. Like it's actually a really nice color. The jock just clockwise 24. Oh, it's a quarter. I'm running a quarter. Okay. I'm, I'm thinking clock. I'm thinking a clock when it's, it's 0.24. So it's point. If one is a full turn. There we go. I'm assuming it's from looking directly at it. So from below. Well, I just did half a turn one direction and now it's only going back a quarter turn. Adjust uh, 0.04. I'm I'm within 0.04 of a turn. Um, let's see if that helps at all. Don't move it while it's doing insane. Uh, Nathan, I bought a hot end from Slice and then you give me any stickers. I emailed them and they're sending me a bunch. Uh, do you have a PO box? I need to get a PO box set up. Um, in terms of Slice, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, yeah. Um, thank you, but not needed. Let's see here. So 0.02. Okay. I'm, I'm good enough. I'm good enough. Okay. So now, um, what I need to do is set my Z offset. So let me home and then what I'm going to do is going to move to the middle of the bed and find out how much I got to adjust my Z offset by. Clipper would be confused. Yes, because it's assuming it's an M3 screw. I'm sure you could dig into Clipper and adjust it, but. Uh, where did I get the print surface? It is from Fermio Labs. It's PI. It, it's black PI. Okay, so let me move to the middle. G1, Z, 1 point, or X, 1.5, Y, 1.5, go. Now, once we get PID tuning, then I'm going to have a drink. So. Paper time. So we're going to drop down in one moment. Point five. So right now I'm at Z 2.5. So let's see here. So my offset position end stop is it's assuming it's 
half a millimeter below the bed, which it is, but I want to be, it's actually lower than that. So Z negative 2.5. Because it, it takes like, it's not like it clicks right away, right? It depresses a bit. And right now I'm about the width of the spring seal. So if I think it's negative 2.5, it'll be up. Um, Actually, no, it'd be three. Because right now it's negative three. Let's see that. Save close. Is Fermio Labs uh, the Kinovo? I think it's just, yeah, it's just a bigger, it's a custom size Kinovo. Did I, what I, did I accidentally hit it? F. I don't know. Uh, shoot. Okay. Um, sorry if I, you didn't say that. Uh, John Clark. Thank you. Awesome. Appreciate it. You are awesome. Uh, for the wiring tool. Also check the discord. I will check it after stream. Um, I don't know how far back that went. Uh, hello from a tanker ship off the coast of South Carolina. Excited for a month off the ship starting next week. So I can start assembling my V 0.1 parts arrived. Awesome. Um, the V0 will be great on a boat. It's nice and compact. You can fit it in your locker. Back. Yes, it's back. You know what? We're going to do a PID tune. So. Do a PID tune. Um, I'm going to pour a drink while that's doing that. So everyone go get a drink right now. Go get a drink. Go get, um, you can have a tasty beverage. Um, I'm gonna, I think, uh, I still got some whiskey, uh, but we are at that point now where we can, uh, I can PID something. So we're going to PID tune the hot end and, uh, yeah, so PID tune is simple. Blah, 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 blah. You can't see it. There it is. Okay. PID tune calibrate here. Extruder target 240. Go. I forgot to check if we even get heat. Yes, we get heat. Okay, it is heating up. Sweet. We got the hard liquor. Guys, we're about to print something. Do I even have Prusa Slicer on this computer? I purposely hit the mic button. No, the mic button's over here. That was actually an honest to goodness accident. Um, the problem is the mic button's next to camera one, so. Uh, CAD docs. Nope. Okay. 
it. I need a clipper config. Oh, you know what? You know what? It, okay, this is... I know Cura has a config. A default config. Honestly, it's, it's we're going to print something small. Oh, wait, I need... Uh, Not the digi-key box. Not that box. Aha! Spool holder. <laughs> There we go. Hey, look, we got an Ender or uh, a War on V2. So, do we have Slicer Profiles, Maintenance, Tuning Guides? I'll just use the uh shoot I need a profile yeah we'll just use the Bruce or the this one Yep, okay, so we're done that one. Save and fig. I'm not gonna PID tune the bed. The bed is usually stable enough, it's not really an issue. Is there a Voron with three Z motors? Um hypothetically, potentially there is an update to the V1 line that will hypothetically potentially um have that hypothetical potential um Z system. Potentially, hypothetically. Oh yeah, this is supposed to have, uh, dang it, I don't have a spool holder. Oh wait, 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 uh, did I get rid of it? Did I get rid of it? Uh, shoot. <laughs> I'm about to do something really I really shouldn't be doing. Well, it's not really bad. But, um... I don't have the enclosure on this. And the only way the spool holder that I have printed will fit on this is, um, with the enclosure. So, um... We are going to uh, acquiesce something from the Ender. Oh, I like tighten that screw way too much. Hey, that works.
Um, I need a color. I need a color. Let's go with red. I need a little piece of PTFE first. Because you should never feed it directly in. You should always have like some sort of um, guide or something. There we go. So let me do home. I don't have a config. The config doesn't have the screw tilt adjust yet. So. So I gotta do the Z tilts. Shit, let me wipe the bed off too, make sure it's clean. And do the Z tilt adjust. Cube, layer height, uh, we're gonna go with 0.2. Uh, layer width, 0.45, sure. Wall thickness, two layers, sure. Bottom, sure. Three. Um, top layers, we'll have three. Seam alignment, sharpest corner, horizontal expansion, infill density. We'll go with 10% infill. Um, this is plaw, so we'll do that. Build plate is 60. Um, build plate initial layer is 60. Uh, flow 100%. Print speed 120. Outer walls. Yeah, we'll go outer walls, we'll go 60. Inner walls, 80. Um, top surface skin, yeah, we'll go 60. 60. Travel speed 300. Initial layer 30. Z hop speed 40. Sure. Retraction. Retraction distance 0.5 at. Wait, no, 45. No, wait, what am I doing? What am I doing? Yeah, 40. There we go. In skin, Z hop 0.2, span speed 100, initial zero, regular fan speed at 0.8 mil. Okay, great support. Nope, skirt. Nope, push settings. Yeah, I think we're good. Slice. IQ because I actually want to judge this print. <laughs> so let's turn that to 60. Ooh, my ceiling is doing its thing. Uh, one second here. I need to do the uh, system. Director config edit. Director. Steal this from that. Okay. Bed. Bed here. PWM cycle time. Okay, so I don't know if it's coming across on camera right now, but uh, my lights are flickering. Okay. Um, this is a thing with PWM. Um, I don't like it. So I'm adding this line right here to my config called PWM cycle time and this will force the bed to um, cycle at the same rate that the power is the frequency and that should cause no flickering so 60 and we're good there okay let me Get the hot end hot. Make sure we're actually extruding plastic. Check top's bottom speed.
Oh, 46. That's a little fast. Slice. Oh, Kira crashed. crashing Kira. Tune the extruder. Well, it's an LGX and I copied all my tune settings from that guy, which is running an LGX. So they should be uh, pretty much the same. Uh, I'm going to make sure that it actually extrudes though. So, one second. So let's try extruding 20 millimeters of filament. Whoa! TMC extruder reports error. Let's see what we got here. the wrong UART pin. I lost all my stuff. Where are you, chat? There you are. Um, dust boot. The reason is because it's an off-the-shelf item. Zero, yep. Yeah, let me let me check here. Is... No, not reference. Clipper config. Okay. So extruder is stepper Z, which is PA15, PA8, enable pin is. Oh, I got that wrong. Right. Yeah, PD1. Yeah, that's right. The box is there for attention. Uh, stepper Z is PD0. Yeah, so that is correct. So why isn't the extruder working? What is this error even? It reports error. DRV status. What is that? What is that error? is disconnected. What do you mean motor is disconnected?
Yeah, it's got a point four nozzle in it. Wiring fault. Shouldn't be a wiring fault. doing that again. What the heck? It shouldn't be giving me an error. Yes, I turned the printer off first. Yeah, that's the same. black or black or black yeah so if anything it would just be backwards do i have to have in the um the skr2 it's got two Z. so if i'm only using one Z motor um i need the two jumpers in the other one right motor wiring phase correctly yeah it is just check. No, that's the Fizek port. Okay, so let me take these jumpers out. Maybe that's why. Just want to make plastic bolt. Can't get cereal anyways, ain't got no uh hand trout. This again. Temperature, extrude. Hey, motor's going the wrong way. System, pick, 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 edit. Yeah, that was it. So I had the jumpers in, um, cause I'm used to having to put jumpers in when you have two Zs and you're not using one of them. Um, you don't have to deal with this one, I guess. Printer's not mad, I'm sharing the whiskey. Okay, I'll pour one out for it. Nope. 
20. 60, extrude. Okay, it works. Tracked. Zero. Come on. Kira does not want to slice. Fine, screw it. Uh, Prusa Slicer. I don't have... Oh man, I gotta make something here. Okay, uh, 230. Set the size of the printer, so it's... X is 245. Y is 250. Sure, okay. Uh, custom G-code. I don't have no quad gantry level. But I do have uh, Z tilt adjust, which is just Z tilt adjust. Fifty that'll work. Okay, sure. It's through one. It's got a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Uh, length 0.5. Ba ba ba. Save that as toasty. You can to 10, 60, 60. Cool. Cooling. Max. Sure. Sure. Enable auto cooling. Slow print time down if it is below 10 seconds. Sure. Print settings. Layer height 0.2. First layer 0.24. Ba -ba -ba. Perimeters 2, 4, 4. Sure. 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 Infill 10%. Uh, gyroid. Sure. Open that. Cube, slice. I, I know, I need to get Bruce Super Slicer. I know a bunch of guys on the team love it. Oh, wait, what am I doing? What am I doing? What is this baby stuff? 60. Actually, 90. Small perimeters, 60. External perimeters, 60. Infill, uh, 120. 60. Uh, solid infill 60. Top solid infill 50. Uh, bridges 60. Gap fill sure. Travel 300. First layer speed that. Accelerations YOLO. Uh, max speed. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Slice. There we go. Uh, brim. Export G code. that upload job go uploading 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 I want to print the boat you know it's a cube why are we printing the cube because why not Yeah, I know. I, I need to uh, definitely get Super Slicer a try. Um, I just haven't gotten around to it yet. So. Do is I tilt adjust.
just waiting for it to get to temperature. I don't know why it's doing that tilt adjust again. What are you doing? What are you doing? You. Oh, let me try this. Place that. Yeah, the, the, like the built-in tuning and config and everything, you, it's a bit of, it's more in-depth than most printers, obviously. But once you get it all set up, like my printers here, like I can remote start anything from upstairs and I never come down here till print's done. Like you just set it and go. I just love that feature. again. Now this is going to need input shaper tuning. I need to put the enclosure on. I still need to print the enclosure parts for this guy. Push some plastic. Oh. A little close to the bed, but I can live with it. with a brim? Oh no, just a big skirt. No, oh, my headphones just died. Means you guys might lose music. How fast are we printing? We are printing at... I just threw this profile real quick together on Kira, or on uh, Bruce's Slicer, but those are the print speeds there. Um, or was it Peru Napo? Um, I have tutorials on how to do input shaper on my channel. 
Input Shaper is magic. Ooh, Kevin, thank you for becoming a member. Like when you, when you search input shaper demo, there there I am right there. That's me. We love input shaper. Uh, you want to tune um, technically input shaper because input shaper will affect your pressure advance. Um, because input shaper is strictly a movement thing, but it will affect your pressure advance. You don't need pressure advance tuned for input shaper. I can't get a cereal. I don't have the uh, cable cover on this. There we go. And if you're wondering, I have motion or motion canceling. I have noise canceling enabled, so. Might have forgot to set it to a 0.4 nozzle. I might still think it has a 0.6. Oh no, no, we're good. 0.4. Uh, yes, there is a different cable cover for the LGX. Um, it's in the Voron users mod section on the Discord, I believe. Oh, I don't have a fan on this. Shoot. Um, crud. One second. You guys can go there. Uh, the resin stuff can go over there. Go up there. Um. There we go. Emergency fan. <laughs> the last thing you want is your drivers overheating during your first print. What's a stripper cam? It's the camera I use when um, I'm stripping wires and people started calling it stripper cam. So now it's stripper cam. Because somebody wanted an up close look of me stripping wires. You have to change the frame. Um, the V1.8 has a slightly different frame. You can reuse a lot of the stuff if you uh, do. If you're okay with cutting and drilling, 
and tapping. So yeah. This stuff is printing like poop. <laughs> this is some, oh yeah, this is my crappy PLA. This stuff is garbage. This stuff is absolutely garbage. I forgot about it. There's a reason I don't use this PLA. <laughs> Yeah, here. Cancel print. Yeah, this stuff's garbage. Let me see here, though. I do have... Um... Yeah, we'll, we'll use this. Have I thought about building a Moldex? I have not. Honestly, when it comes to printers, like, you need to remember, like, um, I don't need half the printers I have. <laughs> um, and right now it's mostly Vorons. Um, it's hard for me to justify diving into another build just for fun. Um, the Voron stuff started mostly because I'm like involved I'm on the Voron dev team, but it's like for educational instructions and all that and whatnot. again. Ooh. But I, I have looked at it a little bit, but I haven't really dived into it. You want to know the fun part about having your setup in the basement? I had my house sprayed for you guys. You should be dead. Spiders. Yep. Every like um where I live, um, all the houses used to be in like farm field, like all the subdivisions are former farm field. So most of us, most people get their house sprayed for spiders twice a year. Isaac spider, not real spider. <laughs> uh, uh, double, yeah. Let me actually take a look because I've seen I've, I've seen the pictures from the guy on uh, Twitter about the Moldex. 
um, I think I'm pretty sure I follow him on Twitter. But I've never actually like dove into it. Um, just because I, I don't have the time. Uh, yeah, it's a dual Mark Forge setup. Just waiting for the nozzle to get back to temperature right now. Do it too. Images. Yeah. It's cool. Oh, what the heck. It's really... I hate not having a proper config set up yet. It likes to do all kinds of dumb stuff. Double home. Let's see if the dog's here. Come on, Coda. Oh. What spool is that? It's uh, just some Airy One Green. The spool holder is literally the spool holder off my Ender 3. stuff's printing much smoother it is a nice green um everyone pla is actually i like it um it's this green and blue like obviously i'm not printing the blue right now but it, that's the green it's like a it's, it's almost got a little bit of a sheen to it i like it I can't remember where I got it from. No. Oh. Yeah, I don't have anything. Like, I could blast it with the heat gun. I don't think the spiders like heat guns. Oh, great. He fell on all the electronics. There's a spider in my pie. Can't get to him. <laughs> the printer's printing. I don't want to stop the printer printing. Please don't kill spiders. I have my house sprayed to get rid of them, specifically. Okay, you know, he gets to live for another day. Uh, ooh, Project R3D, 50. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. I don't know why my alerts aren't working. Why they're so delayed. Let me... Properties. 
Uh, refresh cache. There we go. Okay, I don't know. I, I don't know why it's not popping up. There we go. Um, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, do you think the Voron teams or designs are held back by having design around people printing parts in FFF, FDM? Uh, do you think they would be able much more of the design for SLS? Um, we've... Here's the thing. Like, right now, there are AliExpress vendors that are selling kits with machine parts. You can go on AliExpress and buy a full set of Voron parts that are machine. Um, yes... We are held back by the fact that we're designed for FDM, but part of the goal of the Voron design project, um, one of like the un we have a whole bunch of unstated rules and whatnot, is no specialized equipment or tools. The moment you have to buy a motor mount machine by X company, that breaks that rule. Um, yeah, it's okay to have like you know little oddball components that are optional, like you know the LGX extru extruder. Um, or some other random stuff that you have the option of buying like a pre-assembled or pre-built unit by a vendor but we like having it be where you can just you don't need anyone like you can literally just buy everything and just build it yourself um so it does hold us back but it also allows us to you know because of those restrictions we can get very creative and there's a lot of like once you learning to work around the issue leads to a lot of really cool revelations, I think. So yes, like if I were to ever sell commercial Vorons, it would be a V1 and it would be almost completely redesigned to use, you know, basic machine components because it scales better and it's stronger, but you don't really need it. Remember the vast, pretty much every Voron built is built out of pl printed plastic ABS parts and they print fine. So having to go to custom machined or SLS parts, it increases the price. It, it lowers the ability for those in remote areas, um, non main market countries to get in. Like if you had to buy components that were machined in the US to build your printer and you lived in, we, we have people that build them in the Middle East, Africa, Asia, like pretty much anywhere AliExpress short ships, you can build a Voron, so. Yeah. Like some people have printed, you know, got parts in SLS or I've seen people machine their own parts. There, there's some few parts that you can really simplify if you had access to CNC, like the whole X, Y joints, AB drives, whatnot. Um, you can pretty much just do out of plate steel and spacers. Like there's really nothing to it. Um, I, I got my 3018 there. I'm tempted to try machining some parts on here at a Delrin because uh, the 3018 will cut Delrin pretty good. So yeah. Yes, this is Sane Smart CF dialog. Wouldn't go injection mullet? No, God no. You'd have to redesign pretty much the entire printer. Pretty much nothing that's designed for printing is well is compatible with F, uh, injection molding. Like nobody has draft angles on anything. SLS is getting cheaper. It's still getting, it's getting cheaper, but it like, I don't know. It's, it's still not as home gamer as, as available. Like even right now, printed Ford, like the printed Ford team, um, the goal of printed Ford is printing Voron parts for those that can't print Voron parts in ABS. Cause honestly, if you're trying to print your Voron in PLA or PTG, it's not worth it because you're going to end up reprinting it all in ABS anyway. So a lot of people go for the printed Ford thing. So imagine printed Ford, but for SLS now, okay, where you have to use SLS. We've redesigned it. You have to use SLS right now. People who can't even print ABS and ABS honestly is not hard to print. You can put a cardboard box on an Ender 3 and print ABS. Right now, the queue for like printed Ford, I think it's only, is several hundred. So imagine having to go to SLS now, because there'd be a, even less SLS machines um, trying to do the manufacturing. Let me just drop these speeds down a bit. So. Definitely gonna have to do some tuning. I'm, I'm pretty sure this profile is screwed up.
Get an SLS printer for 6,000. Oof. That is getting pricey, though. That's like even, you know, five years ago, you could get an FDM for under a thousand still. Well, if SLS becomes as, as common as FDM, I think we'll take another look at it. Wow, this is not printing well at all. I don't know if it's the heat or what. That's 55. Extruder's 210. Something's up with this profile. Something is up with this profile. 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.4. Infill. up with this profile oh well yeah it's way over extruding oh well here let's just drop the flow down go down to 90 do it live Oh well, it's a first print. It's not going to be a uh, anything good. I can tell you that. Any time frame when it's done. Time is it anyways? 11 11. Oh, it's my Z hop. I'm like, what's moving? It's my Z hop. Any news on Voron subtractive? When well, it's done. Voron subtractive is way out. My rotation distance is 55. It's the value that I copied from another printer that's running an LG Extra is fine. So. Rotation distance 55. Hmm. All right. Unless I'm looking at the wrong thing. No, right. that's right. That's right. Why, Derek, what do you have for uh, rotation distance? Yeah. 
And you know what? I'm going to cancel the print right now because, uh, cancel print. Because honestly, um, it's coming out like poop and I just want to double check some stuff. First layer's good. Okay, let's see here. Okay, so we got the print off. Bed can go. Let's see. 20. Let's see how the extrusion actually is. See if we are over extruding, under extruding, or if it's just going for an adventure. I have a feeling it's going for an adventure. Gave me 3D, $5. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. It is alive. Yes, it is alive. Uh, Bontech says for clipper rotation distance equals 8. Well, I'm about to extrude 100 millimeters. And we'll see where it ends up. So right now I have it set for 120. So when this is done, it should be 20. Oh, max extrude. Dang it. Max underscore extrude. Yeah, it depends if Clipper is doing, yeah, what uh, Drador said. Man, this is not heating up like I... Okay, let's see. 100 millimeters. Extrude. Yep, extrusion's right. 100 millimeters. Remember, it's got no pressure advanced tuning. It's got... You know what? I'll, I'm going to copy the pressure advance from the... Uh, the other printer. Yeah, it's pretty much the same. Yeah. Yeah, so extrusion's good. Extrusion's good. I tell it to extrude 100, it's extruding 100. Probably just going too fast. But I think I'm going to call it there, though. Um, play around with it a bit tomorrow when I get some time. Get everything tuned up properly. Um, but we are good, for the most part. It lives. It prints. I got to go reprint the uh, fan shroud. So I'll do that tonight. Uh, get it done up. And yeah. Slap an enclosure on it. So next week's stream um, is probably going to be playing around with this a bit more. Um, 
I think next week's stream, just because every stream has been busy and hectic, is just going to be getting it printing. And we'll just let it print something, uh, show off the completed printer, answer any questions, and just hang out. Uh, next week's stream should just be a fun Q&A. Um, so yeah, so hey, it's up, it moves, it prints, um, it does its thing. Um, yeah. That's that. So, hope everyone had a good night. Uh, we got our first plastic pushed. It's doing its thing. Hope everyone learned something. If not, hope you were entertained. If not, why are you here? But uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Be safe out there. For anyone who donated, oh, I'm all over the place. Um, for anyone who donated, you're awesome. Project R3D, you're really awesome. Um, anyone who became a member of the channel, you guys are awesome. Before you leave, don't forget to like that smash button. Be safe out there. Wash your hands. See you next week. Have a good day. Bye. contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.